KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF 88.1 in Fresno, K248BR 97.5 in Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org. Coming up next, Rude Awakening. Stay tuned. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. On today's show, I'll speak to one of the founders of Rewiring America, engineer Sam Kalish, on how their organization has a plan to solve the climate emergency. And later in the hour, I'll have a special guest. But first, the news. I'm Max Pringle with these headlines. The Food and Drug Administration is expected to authorize biotech company Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use today. An FDA advisory panel cleared the Moderna vaccine as safe and effective on Thursday. Christopher Martinez reports. Arnold Manto is an epidemiologist at the University of Michigan and chair of the committee. Congratulations to us all for achieving this emergency use authorization for a second vaccine, which along with other events will eventually and sooner, we hope, break the back of the pandemic. The action following last week's approval of a Pfizer vaccine brings hope to many people that have been working on the pandemic. The panel reviewed data from Moderna's human clinical trials. Like the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna one was shown to be about 95% effective at preventing serious disease, and it also showed no major side effects. But unlike the Pfizer vaccine, Moderna's is easier to handle, requiring only normal freezers instead of expensive subarctic temperatures. Reporting for Pacifica Radio News KPFA, I'm Christopher Martinez. Vice President Mike Pence and Surgeon General Jerome Adams both received the coronavirus vaccine during a White House event aimed at convincing skeptical Americans that the vaccines are safe. With cases rising across the country, with hospitalizations rising across the country, we have a ways to go. Vigilance and the vaccine is our way through. And building confidence in the vaccine is what brings us here this morning. Pence called the speed with which the vaccine was developed a medical miracle. The pandemic has killed more than 311,000 in the United States. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris also are going to be vaccinated in public, but it's unclear when President Trump will be administered the shot. Negotiators on Capitol Hill are ironing out the final details for a $900 billion COVID relief package. Congressional leaders say a weekend session is almost certain as meeting a Friday midnight deadline appears unlikely. Congress is also up against a deadline to fund the government into the new year. Illinois Democratic Senator Dick Durbin told CNN that Congress can't break for the holidays and leave millions of Americans struggling to get by. It's got to be done. The day after Christmas, 12 million Americans will lose their unemployment benefits if we do nothing. And every day thereafter, another tragedy will hit another family or sector of our economy. That's unacceptable. Both sides say they're hopeful a deal could be reached soon. The agreement includes more than $300 billion in aid to businesses, a $300 per week bonus, federal jobless benefit, and renewal of soon-to-expire state benefits, $600 direct payments to individuals, vaccine distribution funds, and money for renters, schools, the Postal Service, and people needing food aid. However, more aid to states and local governments and liability protections for businesses will not not be included as part of the compromise. President-elect Joe Biden says he has chosen North Carolina regulator Michael Regan as his nominee to lead the Environmental Protection Agency and New Mexico Representative Deb Holland as Interior Secretary. Biden said Thursday that the selections round out what he said would be an experienced climate team ready from their first day in office to tackle climate change. The picks also helped Biden fulfill his promise to put together a cabinet that reflects the diversity of the country. Reagan is black, while Holland would be the first Native American cabinet member in American history. 
More than 300 Nigerian schoolboys have been freed after being kidnapped last week in an attack on their school by Boko Haram militants. The boys have arrived in the capital of Katsina State to celebrations of their release. Future Story News' Phil Ehaza reports. Governor Aminu Bello Masari says the boys who were held in the forest in neighboring Zamfara State have been freed and are currently undergoing security checks. He added that the boys would also be medically examined and reunited with their families on Friday. The kidnapping has raised growing concerns and anger about insecurity in Nigeria and violence in the country's north. President Muhammad Buhari welcomed the students' release and asked for patience while his administration dealt with insecurity issues. And that's FSN's Phil Ahaza reporting. A Centers for Disease Control Committee is meeting to discuss which categories of workers will be deemed essential when prioritizing who will get the COVID-19 vaccines first. And as KPFA's Chris Lee reports, the California Vaccine Advisory Committee is sorting through who should be considered essential workers when it comes to giving out the shots. More than 8 million essential workers are slated to be vaccinated starting early next year in what's called Phase 1B of the state's vaccination plan. According to the working group, three sectors are guaranteed to receive the vaccine. Food and agriculture, such as grocery clerks and farm workers, education and child care, like teachers and daycare workers, and emergency services, such as non-medical first responders, law enforcement officers, firefighters, shelter workers, and child youth services providers. Over 140 emails were received by the committee from groups seeking to prioritize their workers in vaccine distribution. The Drafting Guidelines Work Group meets December 20th to continue defining which essential workers will be in line first for the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm Chris Lee reporting for KPFA. California health authorities have reported a one-day record of 379 coronavirus deaths and more than 52,000 new confirmed cases. The staggering new figures released Thursday mean California has seen more than 1,000 deaths in the last five days and nearly 106,000 cases in just two days. Many of the state's hospitals are now running out of capacity to treat the severest cases. California's pandemic death toll now stands at 21,000 860. The state has also seen the most cases in the nation, with more than 1.7 million confirmed. U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein says she hasn't thought about retiring before her term ends in 2024 amid criticism over her job performance and questions about her age. At 87, Feinstein is the chamber's oldest member. She spoke to the L.A. Times for an interview published Thursday. She acknowledged she may forget things sometimes, but said she doesn't feel her cognitive abilities have diminished. She's also defending her willingness to play nice with Republicans following criticism over her leadership during confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Sunny today in the San Francisco Bay Area, highs in the 50s, lows tonight in the 30s. In the central San Joaquin Valley, morning fog, then clear, highs in the 50s. I'm Max Pringle. News returns at noon with headlines, and stay tuned for the KPFA Evening News at 6 o'clock. A rude awakening is next. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. This is a rude awakening. I'm Sabrina ba- Jacobs, and we are back. We are back, and um, got an amazing interview. I want to start off with uh, with one of the co-founders of Rewiring America. No, this is not about nuclear energy or anything like that. Uh, one of the, the co-founders. His name is Sam Kalish, and he is an engineer, a PhD from Massachusetts. Institute for Technology, or of Technology, and uh, yeah, he's going to break it down what his organization is about, what they're doing, what they're actually just talking about how bad the climate emergency is. They're putting forth ideas about how we can solve it and solve it in short order. So let's go ahead and hear that clip. Rewiring America is an organization that is geared towards solving the climate crisis by using the technology available to us today and in the process creating 25 million jobs as well as saving Americans up to $2,000 
every year. You may ask, how is that possible? Well, a month ago, I featured a promotion by Rewiring America to Electrify America. And to describe how we or you, dear listener, can make it happen, we have Sam Kalish, and he is an engineer and scientist uh, developing advanced manufacturing technologies for the decarbonization of our economy. He is the co-author with Saul Griffin of Rewiring America's Handbook and reports on decarbonizing American households and how many jobs a transition to clean energy would create, and that's up to 25 million, like I've already stated. Uh, he's a research fellow at, at Activate, and his current project, Elmworks, has received... Um, you got to tell me what these acronyms are, Sam oh, Kalish, yeah. NSF, DOE. Uh, he's got a master's as well as a PhD from... MIT, folks, MIT. This is no lightweight. We're talking Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And uh, Sam, thank you so much for being on a route away. How am I supposed to respond to an intro like that? I know. (laughs) That was sweet. Thanks, Sabrina. (laughs) Well, we got to let folks know that you are qualified to to talk on this level, to discuss what uh, Rewiring America is all about. Now, you're a co-founder along with Saul Griffin, correct? Mm Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. So let's get started. Sam, Electrifying America is the premise. It's the mission statement of Rewiring America. It seems possible. Uh, the increase in jobs plausible. The savings to Americans are reality. Um, we can start with the basics of talking and then drill down to uh, talking about all of this and then drill down to the nuts and bolts. Um, to the interested listener who wants to make the plunge, who wants to make that change, how can they get started electrifying their home? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So, I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing that we want to accomplish at rewiring is that, you know, when I, when I go around and talk to people about what they think needs to happen to address this climate crisis, they, they, they think that the only answer is to wait for miracle technology. Um, and, and really we're, we're trying to fight this perception. Um, there are technologies available today. They are at scale being manufactured. Um, and there are relatively no regrets pathways that we can deploy today to start making an impact. And even if some miracle technology comes along in the future, um, they will still be applicable and they will still have been kind of the most effective things that we can do today, given the really, really short timelines that we need to act on. So to your question, for the interested listener that wants to make the plunge, um, single most important thing that they can do is make a commitment to not buying any more new pieces of fossil fuel infrastructure. So that means their furnace, their hot water heater, their stove, their car, and to some degree where they can get their electricity from. Um, And so kind of critically, that doesn't mean you have to run out today and put down a whole bunch of cash on a bunch of new stuff and replace things that still have value in your homes. Um, But what it does mean, it means kind of radically planning for the future, for the next time um, your furnace goes out. Um, You need to plan and maybe save up for um, replacing it not with a natural gas, you know, version that you have today, um, but with a viable electric alternative that's sitting there in the store. It probably costs a little bit more than a natural gas one. Um, but what we've been trying to get across in these reports is that the long-term savings from the significantly lowered energy bills um, will will be higher than this upfront cost. And so even with even if you take a loan to buy this, um, we show that kind of on a state by state basis. Um, we, we can generate savings by doing this electrification and cutting out fossil fuels. So the single most important thing is make this commitment. Indeed, indeed. And, and making that commitment is uh, where a lot of folks are at. Um, I think more uh, often than not, there, you know, there are folks out there that are looking for some type of alternative that want to contribute to uh, sure. making our environment and, better. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And, and, and just to be clear, I, I don't want to put this all on the individual. You know, these these are problems that have systemic causes. So, you know, it's it's we shouldn't feel bad if this feels really hard. It is really hard. This is a big transformation that we need to do. And so, um, one of the things that we're really trying to do with rewiring is, is to try to demonstrate the viability of getting um, large uh, loan guarantee programs in place to help people make this transition. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot to ask of, of an individual household to do this. And so, so they really need as much help from the government as they can get. Absolutely. And we'll get to that in a few. Yeah. Um, and what are the, what are the advantages to that individual user aside from saving money and, and hopefully in the long term or shorter term, um, saving the environment? 
that's not enough. <laughs> uh, well, so, uh, what, what, what would be the, uh, well, let me rephrase. Uh, what would be the immediate, of, immediate uh, savings? Uh, these are big goals. Um, it's no small thing, but you know, there are additional advantages. So like um, one really important one is having less uncertainty in your energy bills. So, you know, especially for folks that uh, where they're, you know, the gas they put in their car, uh, the natural gas, they heat their homes with that stuff is a significant portion of their monthly spending. You know, if fuel prices go up and, and, and that expenditure goes up, that's killer. Um, mm-hmm. And so after kind of after the electrification upgrade to your home, um, bills are a ton more predictable besides just being lower. So, so that's one. Um, then, you know, these electric appliances also tend to have significantly lower long-term maintenance requirements. So mm-hmm. um, there's a study that came out recently that said an electric car has a lifetime maintenance cost about half that of a gas car. Mm-hmm. Um, so that means, you know, fewer trips to the mechanic, uh, few, you know, fewer out-of-pocket expenses like that. Um, then there's also a bunch of, of research coming out um, about the hazards of cooking with natural gas in our homes and burning it in our, in our, um, in our furnaces. Um, right. A lot of uh, breathing conditions have been linked, linked to this. And so, um, so, so cutting that out is starting to look like it has a ton of positive externalities. Um, and then sort of like... Also, a bunch of these electric appliances are super snazzy and fun. Um, so, like, <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've owned crappy but lovable, lo- lovable used cars my whole life. Um, yes. But I recently started lease- leasing a Chevy Bolt. And, I mean, I smile every time the fuel gauge spins up instead of down. It's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of savings to the individual as, on the health side as well as in the pocketbook. And that is wonderful to hear. Now, for those, uh, there are those who are concerned with the possible environmental impacts of electrifying their home. Um, talk to us about what those possibilities are and how it could outweigh the positive aspects thereof um sure i I think um am am i correct in in, people talking about sort of where we're going to get materials for solar cells where we're going to dispose of them at the end of their life Um, Mm -hmm. things like that is that what you're asking about absolutely absolutely as well as the 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 environmental impact of of um, electrifying and using electricity um there are a lot of folks and there are Mm -hmm. studies out there that uh people are speaking to in regards to um the, the the emissions of um uh, forgive me for not having the the proper phrasing. Of oh, you, no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so so very critically, uh, th- this is a really good point you bring up. Um, the that depending on where you live, the you know mm-hmm. your electricity mix that's delivered to your house, yeah, it, it represents burning carbon. Um, and so, simultaneous to doing home electrification, to to eliminating the burning of fossil fuels in our homes, we also need to be moving towards uh, central electricity generation that is not based on fossil fuels. But that's already underway. Um, solar and wind are, cheap, are the cheapest sources of electrical generation. Um, per, you know, if you project forward, if you install a plant today, they have the lowest delivered cost of electricity. So, so the market is, is moving that way already. Um, and so by, by uh, eliminating the direct uh, burning of fuels in our homes, we're kind of hopping on that train, if that you know, if that's a good metaphor. Like, we, mm-hmm. um, so so in terms of electrical generation, I mean, cl- clearly we need to be doing as much advocacy as possible for um, for helping that go as fast as possible. Um, but to some extent, it is already underway. And so and so, as individuals, one of the most important things we can do is then is then join that effort and um, stop burning stuff in our homes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And that was the voice of Sam Kalish. Sam Kalish is an engineer, uh, MIT trained engineer with a PhD. Uh, he is one of the co-founders of Rewiring America. And yes, this is a rude awakening. I am Sabrina Jacobs. This is a climate emergency show. It's 8 a.m. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you all. This is the last day of the fun drive. The last day of the fun drive. 1-800-439-5732. If you want to keep programming programming like that no not in pr but programming like that where we're having conversations about what you can do as a listener 
got to keep giving. You got to keep giving. You got to give today. 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org. If you've already been able to do that, if you've already been able to do that, know this. There is some good news here in 2020 uh, in regards to, to the CARES Act signed into law this year. It allows people who don't itemize, uh, they can claim a deduction of up to $300 for charitable giving. That's up to $300 for charitable giving. So whether you itemize or not, you, everyone's able to write off all, all of it or part of your donation to KPFA. Did you hear that? All or part of your donation to KPFA. So please, kpfa.org. You can do it securely online or you can dial 1 800 439 5732. 1 800 439 5732. Now, I think, I hope got Mitch on the line. I, I I wasn't with him last week. I had Brian last week, which was just as fine and dandy, but I got just this connection. It, 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 is, that, is that him? Oh, my God. Mitch, just Mitch as fine. It's like one and the same, Brian, Mitch. <laughs> Not, <a really laughs> no, no, no. Not to me, honey. About- <laughs> no, no, wow. no, no, no. Yeah, no, a rude awakening once again, Sabrina. <laughs> it is you, you never fail to achieve the... The name of your show, my friend. Oh, my goodness. It's so good to hear your voice, and I appreciate that compliment. Definitely need to need to hear it here in the home stretch. We're in the last day, Mitch. How, how's it been for you? How have you been? Um, I know folks have been, uh, wait a minute, are, don't, don't they have a, isn't there a letters and politics pack here, too, that we're giving away? As, oh, as there a is? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I uh, guess not. I, I haven't used it. I, I try to stay away from that stuff, you know. <laughs> I, uh, heavy, I, I like to use food. something that works, Sabrina. We got to be serious <laughs> here and, you know, raise some money. And hey, so uh, I, you were indicating it is uh, the last day of the fun drive. Um, it is the last day of the fun drive. It truly, truly is. I, I, we've got some original uh, premiums. I'm, I'm loving this new face mask. I'm loving the new face mask. I think it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful design. It's got our logo on it. It's classy, understated, but, you know, and, and it does its job. You know, it's a face mask. So, but uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's with a donation of $100. Uh, 1-800-439-5732. What do you think of the interview with, uh, with uh, one of the co-founders of Rewiring America? They're actually putting forth ideas or, or, or making these ideas a reality as far as trying to battle the climate emergency. What are your thoughts? Mitch Jezerich. Important and important to have a show like this that is dedicated to the climate emergency because, Sabrina, even while we may be experiencing and watching in real time the end of a Trump uh, presidency, Mm -hmm. uh, it will not mean the end of the climate emergency. Trump Mm -hmm. didn't create the climate emergency. He certainly didn't help it out, uh, unless if you mean help it out is spur it on, but he certainly didn't create it. And this is going to be a long term, a long time process, a long term battle uh, that we are in to save the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. We are talking about trying to save the planet. I I would say, uh, you know, you you asked me, how am I doing? I'm I'm doing fine. I mean, I'm okay, Right. Uh, Living under a time of a pandemic, just like everyone else. It's the one thing that we're all doing together, Um, you know, and not all things under that are equal, obviously. But nonetheless, yeah, we're, we're living in a. In a pandemic, but one thing that it has made me do just by really being forced to be in my neighborhood now for 10 straight months, which, you know, I have, I, that hasn't happened to me since probably I was a little kid growing up during a school year, um, right. is right. is it made me really focus and, and be, I, I feel, uh, have, have a bit of a deeper mm-hmm. understanding of, of where I live, but also the environment of mm-hmm. where I live. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. to me, that's actually been a very profound thing to have happened in all of this. And it has made me also worry. You know, the thing is, the more the more you learn about your environment, the more you love the environment, right? Mm-hmm. The more you love nature, the more you love even in urban areas, you have the environment, you have wildlife. I mean, there's still Absolutely. birds out there, even yeah. though we've lost a third of them over the last 50 years. Right. Um, still, you know, we still have a connection to it. And the more you fall in love with it, the more heartbreaking it becomes to watch what's happening to the earth and what we're doing to the earth. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's wildly important to have 
programs like this one that is dedicated to covering the, the, the climate emergency that we are all experiencing. And this is a really important time, Sabrina Jacobs, that we're going into with a new administration. We at least have, yeah. uh, we'll at least have a new administration that's going to give uh, issues around climate uh, emergency, climate justice, climate change, you name it, lip mm-hmm. service. It's still going to have to be pushed because, I mean, these folks were just in charge not that long ago. Um, right. And right. there needs to be, I mean, th- 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 we don't have any more time to waste. And that's why we need to make sure KPFA has a dedicated program that airs on prime time, 8 a.m. during the week. You don't get any more primetime radio uh, than that. And that's why we need to keep this here. But And why we also need to keep KPFA on the air. Sabrina, we come in. Uh, we're about thirty. Uh, we're about $28,000 away from being able to make our overall goal that we have to reach by the end of the day. Uh, mm-hmm. It's doable, but it's not guaranteed. And w- the money we have to raise is not just some arbitrary number that, you know, people in the front offices come up with. This is a number that is budgeted for this is a number that keeps k this is an amount of money that keeps kpfa on the air for everything that it brings you and i do want to let listeners know we actually have a challenge this hour and it's a pretty big one my friend it is of one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars and it is from three separate listeners who have combined their resources annette and san rafael Tyler and Rancho Cordova, an anonymous donor in Petaluma, all together put their money in for us to raise $1,260. That means, Sabrina, we can, between now and the very top of the hour, raise that $1,260. That everyone's donation will be doubled today. And that doubling of the donation means that if we make it, that would be $2,520, I think, $2,520. I had to do that in my head real quick. Uh, Towards our, you know, towards that twenty eight thousand dollars that we still need to reach, and as you see, that's not going to get us there. It's not going to get us to the home, you know. It's not going to get us to the finish line. But what it does do, what it does do. do. Well, I'll just say this. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm about to wrap up. Uh, What 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 it does do is that it gives our 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 colleagues in the afternoon, people like. Anita Johnson, Flashpoints, the KPFA Evening News. It gives them an opportunity to get us there where we need to be. But if we aren't able to make this $1,260 challenge, well, then it's a big step backwards because we've got to offer these people their money back. So the number is 1 800 439 5732. 1 800 439 5732. And online at kpfa.org. No doubt. And you know what? This is the home stretch again, folks. And it is 8 a.m., but we do need you to start kicking in, what, $28,000 short. We can do that. We can do that. We've done it before. We have done it before. And you know what? It's going to a good cause. I don't have to tell you that. You know, this is a time when good information literally is saving lives. And you are getting reporting with integrity. You are getting reporting, honest reporting. You're getting truth tellers. Giving you the lowdown after going through four years of being lied to, this is the place a lot of folks have been tuning into. So we want to keep all of that information flowing. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. And, and you know what? There are hundreds of thousands of people counting on us, counting on KPFA to keep doing this. And that's why we need you to pledge. Everybody here is doing incredible work to keep that information flowing. Our our engineering team has gone to heroic lengths to make it possible for us to broadcast from home. And it has not been easy. If you've been listening to A Rude Awakening, you've heard some of the choppy interviews that I've had to do um, because the connection wasn't that good. Or, you know, and and you've you've bared through it and, and... I appreciate it. I truly appreciate it because I'm getting better. You know, we, we had all had to become our own engineers. Isn't that right, Mitch? one 5732 It has not been fun. It had to be a quick study. But you know what? Figured it out, and we're doing a lot better being our own engineers. one 800 439 Five seven three two. Our news staff—they're—they're they're, they're producing the best roundups of what's happening on air, bar none. You know, we still have some stringers out there. We still have some stringers out there. They've got the KPFA masks on, and they're out there getting the stories. Especially like, like when the George Floyd uh, movement uh, exploded. 
You know, we had stringers out there. We had folks reporting back and letting us know what was going on on those front lines. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous front lines. 1-800-439-5732. We want to keep that information coming to you. What were you going to say, Mitch? Sorry about that. Oh, I think the number was more important at the time. I think a quick conclusion. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. Online at kpfa.org. I know our time is short here, Sabrina, but let me just add one last thing. Talking mm-hmm. about the KPFA evening news. I mean, this is, and it's not just the evening news. I mean, it's the entire radio station that you get with your contribution. It does not go just to one show. It goes to everything that this radio station does, which includes our our, our training programs in which we take people from the community into the station um, to learn everything there is about radio includes the programs that Bob Baldock and Ken Preston produce that they're now doing on Zoom that I know you're very much a part of as well. I mean, it's everything that KPFA has meant in this community is what your contribution goes to. But speaking about the evening news, I mean, it's just like when you listen Mm -hmm. to it for that hour in the evening, it, it is equivalent really to reading an entire newspaper. Uh, yeah. It is comprehensive, and you're just getting the straight news. It isn't value, especially for a time that we live in, in which there's so much news happening almost on us every single day. It's happening on a daily basis. Uh, it's really remarkable. And this is a time mm-hmm. in which we've seen newsrooms across the country, including within the Pacifica Radio Network at other stations, close down. Right. Perhaps. Right. And that's this is this is not the time for that to happen. The game is not over just because Trump may not be president come 2021. The mm-hmm. game is 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 this we're, we're maybe in the second quarter uh, as far as you know I mean it these are vital times. Absolutely. These are really important. I mean there's a lot of people out there right now that can't contribute and we we get that and we understand that. Times are hard right now. That means mm-hmm. we got to come to the people that actually can. Maybe some of the people that usually don't do this kind of thing. I get it. I don't. I don't donate to everything that 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 I use. Right. I mean, it's, it's human nature. It's on. I'm being honest here. But yeah, there's also have to be re- understanding that there's a lot of people that also rely on this radio station, and it's important mm-hmm. to keep it free and available. Our product is available to everyone, regardless of their ability to donate. So even if they mm-hmm. can't donate, even if they choose not to donate, what we do, our archives, what we do on air, all of it together is available to anyone, anytime they need it. But that only exists if there are people that see this as a civic duty of like, I need to do my part to make mm-hmm. sure it's still here for everyone. And it's dependable Absolutely. information. Yeah. It's dependable information. That's the part that's important. That's the part that I cannot stress enough. You know, it's news with integrity. It's it's public affairs with integrity. It's it's music with integrity. You know, I want to say thank you to Roberta. My goodness, thank you so much, Roberta, out in Palo Alto. We got Scott. He says he loves the show, and Roberta actually says, "Keep up the good work." Well, yes, ma'am, I intend to. Uh, we got Carol out in Berkeley. Special thanks to Sabrina Jacobs for the urgently needed show, Rude Awakening. Appreciate you. Carol, thank you so much. And uh, we've got, um, oh, and then Frederick. Thank you, Frederick, out in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, my gosh. From the land of enchantment. Um, love, hard knock, flashpoints, letters in politics, behind their traditions, uh, the Sunday show, and the best music with so much more. Thank you so much, Frederick. We appreciate you. And that's somebody who's uh, who's listening online at kpfa.org. And to be able to keep that website up, to keep it going, we got to have you give. We got to have you donate. And it, it, it's it's hard. It's hard for us to sit here and ask. It's hard for us to sit here and, and you know, I don't want to say beg, but, uh, you know, make the plea. We're not <laughs> make the plea. Day. Yeah, but we're not beyond. Well, we're not I'll do beyond. it. No, I'm not. I've I'm done not it doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it right now. 1 800 439 5732. 1 800 439 5732. You can also give securely at kpfa.org. And folks, uh, if I did not mention, I think I did. I'm almost positive I did. I want to just give you a little uh, little input on uh, the, the whole special. 2020 tax deduction. This is very, very important since we're at year, years in. Uh, some good news here in 2020. The CARES Act signed into law this year allows people who don't itemize, they can claim a deduction of up to $300 for charitable giving. Uh, so whether you itemize or not, everyone can write off all or part of your donation to KPFA. We've got part two 
We've got part two of the interview that I did with Rewiring America's uh, one of their co-founders, Sam Kalash. He's an MIT engineer, uh, MIT trained engineer. I want to go ahead and give some more information uh, to you folks about uh, what they're actually doing what they're actually doing at Rewiring America um, to to solve the climate emergency crisis. So we'll be back. Mitch and I will be back. This is Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. Let's go ahead and hear that clip. Thank you. So now the plan that that you created with the co-founder of Rewiring America, Saul Griffin, um, Mm -hmm. Sam, it includes a a lot of... There are... Sorry to interrupt. There are, there are another okay. a couple other co-founders as well, just to give them credit. So Saul Griffith, Alex Lasky, and Adam Zorowski. Okay. Well, appreciate that. I'm sure they do as well. Now, it, it includes a lot of infrastructure restructuring, um, the, the, re, the recreation of policy around electricity and, and, and how we're charged for our electric uh, electrical bills. Um, it, where is the organization in regards to presenting policy changes to legislators? Is it is this moving forward, or is it still in the, in the infancy stages? Um, where are you as it, far as that's concerned? It is absolutely moving forward. Um, we we've been in we've been able to um, provide input to um, some of the proposals being put forward at some of the highest levels of government, um, which has been really really exciting to see. You know, certainly in those conversations, there's a ton of voices at the table, and you know, everyone's needs uh, need to be represented in legislation that goes forward, but. Um, I, th- I think that we've had a, a, a pretty good effect so far, especially in terms of shifting the conversation from the sort of 1970s notion of efficiency um, mm-hmm. that was bor- born out of oil shortages and um, sort of trade embargoes and things like that. Oh, we just need to use less of this thing um, to the conversation today really is not about efficiency. It needs to be about transformation. We, we, we really just need to change how we power our lives. And so We've managed to change some of the language in um, some proposals put forward to talk less about efficiency and more about actual electrification. Um, but, you know, sort of critically, I think one of the reasons that people are willing to, to talk about this is that um, this, the, the notion that you can do this and save money and increase job security is, a, is kind of a, a message that sells. It's, it's not um, talking about climate policy as if it's going to be a bunch of pain. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's difficult to watch politicians on TV sometimes talk about their climate policy through, you know, gritted teeth. Like this is going to be really hard, but we have to do it. Um, this is actually, you know, it's a big opportunity. Um, it's potential to save individual people a lot of money. And it's actually a great opportunity for stimulus dollars to be spent. Stimulus dollars are spent providing loan guarantees to individuals to electrify their homes that provides lasting, physical, tangible, long-term savings while also putting money into people's pockets. Um, it, it, it's a message that has been relatively well received so far, and we're going to keep pushing it. Mm-hmm, most definitely. Now, is this a nationwide thing as far as uh, um, presenting the the, the uh, rewiring America, electrifying mm-hmm. the home idea? Is 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 it a nationwide thing that you're presenting to le- legislators, or is it something that's just uh, in pockets of the United States, like say for California, say for example, California, or uh, uh, somewhere in Texas, or uh, um, where where are we talking about as far as the legislators being open to the idea? Of, of, yeah, of so, re, I mean, rewiring the infrastructure um, yeah. and from the ground up because, I mean, we're talking about like, you know, we're talking about policy in regards to how people are charged for their electrical bill. That means that, you know, these legislators are going to have to, you know, uh, become more in concert with the people as opposed to being in concert with uh, big energy like PG&E, uh, like uh, Southern California Edison, et cetera. Go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we, you know, we're trying to cast as broad a net as possible. Um, and you know, what makes this, what, what makes this possible is that we are sort of at our core, really data driven as an organization. So right. um, myself, and, the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Although, I mean, you know, so it's like uh, the government keeps pretty, the U S government keeps pretty good data on a lot of its energy expenditures and a lot of how it's used. And if you do the work and stitch a lot of these data sets together, you can get a really pretty comprehensive view of uh, where the opportunities are and um, where potential for savings is. And so we, we've tried to really do this. You know, I, Saul and I have been working together for about 10 years on projects related to this, um, trying to mine as much public data as possible and 
provide, you know, get private data to augment it and, and really be data driven. And, and that allows us to, to tailor the message. Um, so in, in terms of the, like the household savings report we recently published that had analytics state by state. Um, and we recently kind of repackaged all of that into individual state-based reports to be able to engage more on a more local basis. So send that to local reporters, get, um, send that to local politicians. Um, and then hope that we can start to build a coalition of volunteers. Uh, we've been getting a bunch of inbound uh, requests for volunteer opportunities to help augment what the local picture looks like. So help gather local data, help uh, spread awareness of local events that are happening. Um, like I just talked to someone in, in Boston who was trying to rally supporters because there was a meeting at the city council where they were going to purchase a whole bunch of new diesel buses. And, you know, the tagline was that, oh, we're going to purchase, you know, a couple hybrid buses. Um, right. You know, n- never mind all the other diesel buses we we're also going to purchase. So he was kind of try- trying to rally up a bunch of people to show up and say, hey, that's not that, you know, don't don't try to slip this under the rug. Like, we care about this. We don't want you to buy new diesel uh, infrastructure if there are electric alternatives built. Most definitely. So, th- so you, there is that support. There is that support out there uh, among the legislators. Um, when do you do you see like the, 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 there's? A, I'm sure there are phases uh, as far as rolling out um, these projects uh, for individual homes. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole another segment for uh, the the um, for companies, uh, major corporations. Uh, when do you see this 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 rollout of uh, electrifying America. As you know, it, it's ready today. So um, uh, <laughs> it depends on what uh, sort of what scale we're talking about. I mean, it, individuals can just, you know, the commitment I mentioned, it, individuals can sure. just decide to, to do that today. And, you know, if, if, if pe- people say that they really care about the climate crisis, um, take a portion of your paycheck and put it into a savings account for the, when, when you have to um, replace your hot water heater. Pay attention to the rebates and uh, loan guarantee programs that are coming out to help you do this. You know, so there are already a number of um, tax credits and, and rebate programs for things around, you know, between federal, split between federal and state, things like electric vehicles and putting solar on your roof. Um, pay, pay attention to that and, and leverage them, uh, save you even more money. Um, but the sort of the widespread rollout, you know, the people, people um, talk about, um, time, you know, making commitments to, um, to, to, to going to sort of net zero by 2040 or hitting this, this much penetration of electric vehicles by 2025. Um, there's, there's a bunch of things that are, that are tossed around. And so there's no, you know, sorry, this isn't a good radio answer, but there's no one real answer. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. You're doing just fine. So the last question, last question for Saul Kalish. Again, folks, Saul Kalish is one of the co-founders, one of the co-founders of Rewiring America. Uh, he is a PhD from MIT. That's right. Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And uh, he has been putting his brain to work uh, in electrifying America rewiringamerica.org electrifying America so that uh, hey contribute to taking down the emergency taking it down a couple of notches if not completely eliminating the climate emergency last question jobs 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 yeah. jobs so where are where do you see that happening is are we talking 2024 as well um a lot of folks are are out of work right now because of this pandemic that we're dealing with um Mm -hmm. and and a lot of folks that are in the coal industry i mean they've been losing their jobs um and you know there there is this whole retraining that needs to happen for for millions and millions of folks um where do you see that in, in regards to electrifying America, rewiring America, individuals getting their homes electrified and taking it to that next level of getting folks employed so that they're able to present and, and, and be able to, to contribute to um, society on that level in those new positions? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Great question. I mean, this, this is a lot of work, the, the transition we're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of work means lots of jobs. And so, mm-hmm. um, 
So a couple months ago, we sort of did a, a econometric analysis of, of what this could look like. And the kind of short answer is, um, in the transition, uh, it's going to generate 25 million jobs across the U.S., um, leading to about 10 million sustained jobs. Um, and those are going to be kind of significant portion of those distributed in every zip code and unexportable. Um, these are, you know, job creation that isn't going to be here one day and then um, get shipped overseas the next day because these are jobs, you know, in neighborhoods getting up on people's roofs, installing solar, getting down in people's basements, um, installing hot water heaters. Um, so, so they're not going anywhere. So there's significant job creation potential. To your point, there is a ton of retraining that needs to happen. So we, we model that as well. Um, so not insignificant amount of jobs, just in the retraining effort. But yeah, so, so kind of on a state-by-state basis, um, mm-hmm. the, there's significant job creation potential. So for instance, in California, it's about 800,000 um, uh, jobs that will be created in that that's just in the electrification of the residential sector. Um, mm-hmm. So the kind of, the kind of uh, home retrofits that we're talking about. Right, 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 right. Okay, well, that is a start. That is a wonderful, wonderful start. Uh, in California, um, there's been so much legislation put towards trying to clean up the environment and and, and, and subsequently and, and, and you know, creating these jobs at the same time, you know, simultaneously creating these jobs at the same time. It's like, okay, well, when is this supposed to happen? And it sounds like your organization is pushing uh, towards that. And that's a, that's a plus. That is a plus. Again, folks, again, folks, talking to Mr. Sam Kalish, and uh, he's one of the co-founders, engineer, scientist uh, at Rewiring America. Uh, he's developed advanced manufacturing technologies for the decarbonization of our economy. Rewiring America is about taking us out of this climate emergency, creating jobs and saving you, you, the consumer, some money on your bill. Sam, thank you so much for being on A Rude Awakening. Um, this is the first of many conversations and uh, oh. yeah, definitely want to keep our, keep our, 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 you know, ear to that drum. <laughs> totally. This, this is great. Really, really. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good time. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Well, there you have it. How many other shows out there? I'm I'm sure there are a few good ones. Where are you going to get information about uh, what you can do about uh, taking this climate emergency uh, down a notch and and, then doing something about it on your end as an individual? Um, Not too many shows in prime time. But we've got this one here, and I want to thank management. I want to say thank you to management for uh, creating this show and and suggesting that it be created. And that none of this would be possible without you or the home stretch of our fund drive folks. 1-800-439-5732. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs, along with Mitch Jezerich of Letters and Politics. Mitch, thank you so much for stopping by. And, uh, Sabrina, always good to be on with primetime Sabrina Jacobs. <laughs> You're primetime, too, Are you too, kidding? Bro? When I got the note, will you be on with primetime Sabrina Jacobs? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> That's primetime. They did not write that. They did not write that. <laughs> I'm sure that, yeah, that came from management, right? Okay. <laughs> Huh? No, I stayed up all night writing that down. I was just looking for the perfect <laughs> little phrase that I'd be able to get in here to inspire people to go to their phones and support this important radio program, A Rude Awakening, and support Thank this you. historic radio station. That's hey, right. quickly, That's let me story. give you an update on that challenge that we have of yes. $1,260. We yes. have raised $600 towards that yes. $1,260, so we are still... away. This is the final day for KPFA's end of the year fund uh, fund drive, which could, it's it's a couple of reasons it's important. One Mm -hmm. is it keeps us on the air in these very important months and the beginning of a new government in the new year. Trust me, the media, which to their credit, largely in these last few years, albeit not perfect, but nonetheless, you know, Mm -hmm. found a way of being incredibly critical of power. Mm -hmm. But I think that was just because of Donald Trump. I actually do not anticipate that to go forward uh, in the new year with a Biden administration. And if they are, and they will be critical, but it'll be criticism from the right. It'll be criticism from conservatives. It'll Mm -hmm. be 
criticism towards we're spending too much money. You know, you know how the whole playbook goes, right? Yeah. That's why it's incredibly important to have a radio station like this on the air to ensure that we're still pushing the message that you're pushing uh, on this radio program concerning the climate emergency. So that's one big reason why I think people should be supporting this radio station today, because if not, there's no guarantee. KPFA is always at the precipice. We're always on the edge. And mm-hmm. it gets so normal, but that doesn't mean we're actually not there. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean we can't not go over the edge. We certainly can. Uh, mm-hmm. But the other thing I would say, it's the end of the year, Sabrina. So this is like the – this could be one of the final opportunities that somebody has to Indeed. make a contribution and to be able to write it off on their taxes in the new year when they do their uh, tax taxes in these next, you know, few uh, few months. So the phone mm-hmm. number is 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, and online, kpfa.org. That's right, 1-800-439-5732. That is right, Mr. Mitch Jezerich. And folks, um, there is a special 2020, special 2020 tax deduction, tax deduction for charitable givers. So if you, it, it doesn't matter if you itemize or not. Uh, if you give up to $300, um, you don't have to worry about it. And you don't have to worry about itemizing it. And, and you can write it off. So you can write it off. So that is, that's one of the selling points that we're throwing at you. 1-800-439-5732, kpfa.org, securely. And uh, you know what? I I, I, I want to let folks know, it doesn't matter if you have $20. It doesn't matter if you have $50. It doesn't matter if you have $100. We have an amazing premium gift for you. Um, it's called In Praise of Listeners. And it's Alice Walker. Everybody knows who Alice Walker is. Yes, color purple, Alice Walker. Studs Turkel, right, folks? You've been listening to KPFA for at least you know, 10, 15 years. You know who Studs Turkel is? And Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn, yes, People's History of the United States author Howard Zinn. Um, we went to the Pacifica Radio Archives. We have archives from the last 70 plus years. Um, and we dug in there and we found this amazing collection here. Actually, we didn't get it from the archives. That, that's not we did it? We got it from. No, our program director, Laura Privis, found some tapes in the station. Look, you're around for 70 so years. We have weird amazing. things all over the place, right? Oh, in the closets cool. and in the corners and the crevices and. Totally. All of this. And Laura Privis came upon this tape and she oh. just put it. We still have tape players. And she put it into yes, a machine. We do. And it was this I, this was, was this event from, I think it was 1989 with Howard Zinn, <gasps> and Studs Turkle, and mm-hmm. Alice Walker. Mm-hmm. It, it's mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. From 1988. It has that, you've been a part of a lot. And oh, and. Mm-hmm. Let me not forget the incredible work that even back then Bob Baldock, our very own, did to put that entire event together. His his Herculean uh, strength that he was mm-hmm. able to do to get us these great events in the area. But Sabrina, you and I have been at KPFA uh, events um, mm-hmm. in, many times, and oh, yeah, you know when there's in, in the, I think for some reason I think it happens in the winter. Um, it just there's like a real warmth inside. Like yes. the church, or it's usually in the church, but it could be in a school. Yes. This event with Stud Strickle and Howard Zinn and Alice Walker is actually at Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School. Uh, but there's like this warmth and this sort of, mm-hmm. I don't know, this glowing feeling that you get from being in there. That's exactly what this is. So uh, yes. Laura and the gang uh, went ahead and uh, digitized this to make sure that we could preserve it for a long time. And we're, we're giving it to everyone as a link that they will get in their email um, for a pledge of whatever they can afford, whether it be $25, $50, or $100. So the number is 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, or online at kpfa.org. Recorded live in Berkeley, just like you said, MLK Middle School, and uh, that, that's actually a really beautiful location. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School is beautiful, and it was on Valentine's Day, Valentine's it Day, was, 1998. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Alice Walker, Studs Terkel, Howard Zinn, uh, you know, they're throwing down their, their knowledge. They're throwing down with their life experience, you it's know, terrible. and... 
Uh, now, what was that? It's hilarious. It, and it's absolutely funny. It's funny. <laughs> you can get some comic relief. We need hope right now. We need, you know, to, to be able to feel some level of idealism. Uh, if you're listening to us right now, um, that's what you need to hear. That's what I'm trying to give to you. That's what Mitch is trying to give to you. That's what KPFA is trying to give to you. Some semblance of hope, some semblance of, of a light at the end of the tunnel, because this pandemic has, has taken a lot of people out, literally and figuratively. But for the folks that it's hit, it's hit on a, a, um, a kind of a surface level, if you're still able to give, we definitely need you to dial the number 1-800-439-5732, one 439 5732 You get this gift uh, of, in praise of listeners, Alice Walker, Sutton Turkle, and Howard Zinn. That's for any amount. Of, and, and you know what? There's also the sustainer. There's also the sustainer. Um, what, what are we calling this? The sustainer setup? The sustainer? Oh, uh, folks can. We need to wordsmith that a little bit. Yeah, we need to wordsmith sustainer it out. Sustainer setup. No, I'm not. I'm no, not into, you don't I want to set up? Okay, no. Okay. No, I understand. It's hard to do it on air. I mean, I'm, I'm not <laughs> either. Uh, <laughs> but basically, what you're saying is. Structure. You you kind of create it like, you know, it, it, it's it's common to if you were to think about a subscription mm -hmm. to an mm -hmm. online video platform, right? You, you, you give maybe $5 a month or $10 a month. Again, all we've ever asked for is what you can afford. Um, but the difference between us and, say, a video platform uh, that you pay a subscription rate for mm -hmm. is with us, we're never going to cut you off if you are unable mm -hmm. to do it, if you're unable to donate. Uh, again, with us, you're not buying something. You're actually supporting something. You're supporting this program with Sabrina Jacobs, who has a program dedicated to the climate emergency uh, called Root Awakening. Uh, you're supporting everything that this radio station does, including its legacy and its history of continuing to have voices. We, you know, we've played this um, this tape a few times during the fun drive of Howard Zinn, Studs mm -hmm. Terkel, and Alice Walker. Of course, Alice Walker is still with us, but yeah. Studs Terkel and Howard Zinn are no longer uh, with us. But these are legendary voices that that uh, a station like KPFA's help helps remain on the air, helps keep our legacy alive. And so you're, you're supporting all of this. You're not buying anything. You're supporting it. And that's what we're asking you to do. Uh, Sabrina, we're about $200 away from that challenge. Uh, we yes, have um, three <laughs> minutes remaining in the hour. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. Online at kpfa.org. I want to say thank you to Stephanie out in Palo Alto. She says, appreciate the news. Eileen A., Philip M., Chris W., Mitch J., and Sabrina J. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much. Uh, we got into the J2. Oh, I know, right? I never thought about right? that. All the cool people, huh? We were born in the same year. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Here we are, all coming together on a Friday at 8 a.m. That's right. That's right. Between the 8 and 9 a.m. hours. Good morning to you all. We've got someone anonymously from Santa Rosa. Wow. Thank you so much. We've got uh, William, William out in Belvedere. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Ronald, appreciate you. New guy. Thanks a lot. Mary out in Hemet. Is that my mom? Oh, thanks, mom. I appreciate that. I think that's her. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Mom loves me. <laughs> Thank you, Mary out in Nimmin. Oh, we've got another one, Mary out in Auburn, Illinois. Okay, I know that's oh, wait, not that's my mom. My mom. <laughs> Those are my <laughs> no, no, sorry, got excited. <laughs> my bad. We want to say thank you. This is the home stretch. This is literally the home stretch for a rude awakening. We're almost at the, the top of the next hour. It's 858 1 800 439 5732. 1 800 439 5732. Mitch, what, 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 are we close? Are we close? I, I, I can't do the numbers. Exactly. $160. $160. Okay, this that is too be, much. That could be three it. people basically I at $50. Maybe I didn't do it more. $52. And now we get us there. 1 800 439 5732. 1 800 439 5732. Online at kpfa.org. Final day of our end of the year fund drive. We're trying to get there. We're not there yet. What oh we do goodness. right now will be kind of determinative if we're going to be able to make it at the end of the day, I think. So, yeah. oh, that's right. Well, we'll make you know it, make, say something good. 
Oh, say something yeah, good. Yeah. We, we are so close to this $300,000 goal, $300,000 goal. Uh, you know, a lot of times our, our, you know, over the last probably four or five years has been rough. You know, it's been really, really rough. And we've had to stretch these 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 fun drives out to like three weeks and you know we're barely making it and but you know what this has been two weeks this is a two week that we're ending it after two weeks mark two week mark 1-800-439-5732 i want to thank marion auburn she says bless sabrina mitch and all of you wonderful kpfa troopers life wouldn't be the same without you we thank you marion auburn let me add, let, mm-hmm. let me add we made it we made I it. Did it. I, I we did. did. It. I, I, I just all put in the system this contribution from Alberta. You mentioned Thank it earlier. You. I see it. Yes, yes, that is what is up. We've got eight seconds left. This is a rude awakening. I'm Sabrina Davis. I will be back next week. And uh, Mitch, you're going to be back on Monday. Thank you so much back for listening. At Ten. Yeah, that's your ten. <laughs>